Alright guys, a week ago or two, I showed you this um, little train that I picked up, a train car, called the Atomic Train. And I uh, did endless research on it, didn't really get much information from anybody. Um, I had to do my own research on it, it was uh, not easy to find info on it. But at any rate, long story short, I did find a couple of auctions, and uh, I found uh, two separate auctions, which helped me put together the entire set. I have the entire set. Original set, 1950. Okay. The look of this loco is very, very similar to the uh, Commodore Vanderbilt Marx train. We got three cars. Two cars with the, the hooks on both ends. And then the last one nothing. Okay, so we got the whole set, and uh, again, a lot of research on it, and uh, this thing is pretty darn rare, I tell you. Now, they all say, on the side of it, try to find one that has it well written, I don't know if you can see it or not, I'll post a close-up picture, they all say, made in western Germany. Many guys online that claimed it was a piece of toy was made by um, Technoflix, um, which is a German, very famous German company. However, none of them have any company name on it. None of them. They all say the same thing. Okay? Made in Western Germany. All they say. And uh, I believe from what I heard... Uh, I read it was a very short run, and um, the popularity of this uh, Atomic Age toys is really quite incredible. A lot of guys are strictly collectibles of the Atomic Age stuff, and this little thing, although it's really not much of a train to be honest, um, it's quite collectible. Now this one here, the Loco, okay, I just acquired it. The uh, wind-up is frozen, will not wind, okay, there's no action on the motor, and I originally had a spark coming through there, which is activated with a, um, uh, very similar to a cigarette lighter, an old cigarette lighter, uh, it's just a gear that spins around and um, makes the spark. So, I'm going to have to rip this apart, that's my next thing to do. Probably not going to be able to make a video of it because um, I don't have a tripod. But i got to rip this apart and um, try to loosen up that motor and um, get that spark working again. And when I get that done, then I will be back um, the next video. And possibly I'll get it done quickly, get it done into this video, but I don't know. At any rate, this is what we got here. We got the Loco and the three original cars. 1950 Atomic Train made in West Germany. And again, as I said with the first one, the first video, any info at all anybody has, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay. Alright guys, I hope to be back quickly with uh, this thing. Um, and give you uh, an update on it. We'll see what happens. Alright guys, it's a couple hours after that video you just watched. Here's the Loco, and I have it working. Okay? The whole uh, cover comes off with just um, four little tags here. You see those red tags? Yeah, very you got to be very careful about bending them and not bend them too many times. They will snap. Um, but uh, I don't believe it was ever removed before. That came off very easily. Popped this off. I soaked the motor in WD-40. Let it sit for quite a while. I soaked it a second time. And we have the motor working.
working. Motor is working. I'm going to show you in a minute. First, I want to tell you about the uh, sparker. All right. The spark device works very similar to uh, you'll see you see them in old um, cap guns, uh, um, type guns, uh, spark guns. They used to sell back in the 50s and 60s, uh, and five and dimes. Okay. And what's inside is just a tiny little. See that right there? That flint. It's called a flint. For you fellas that aren't familiar with the old cigarette lighters. Okay. Well, we got another one here. The whole bag full of them. There's a flint. Okay. Which when it's uh, when it's rubbed against metal makes a spark. And it's exactly the same as you see in the old cigarette lighters. This one has no fluid in it, so you'll see just a spark. When I Exactly the same thing that happens inside that train. Okay, there's a gear in there that goes round and round, hits the tip of that flint. That's what causes the spark. Okay, a lot of toys had things like this. Uh, Mark's train is the only one I've ever seen with it. Never seen any other uh, wind-up train before, but Mark's. And uh, again, I personally believe this. The, the nose on this looks a lot like the Commodore Vanderbilt. So, uh, whether there's any connection at all, I can't say. I don't think so, but uh, it's it's just uh, something worth pointing out, I think. But at any rate, we got the new flint in there. We got it all wound up, and I'm going to show you right now how this baby works. Tell me that's not cool, huh? Come on. Tell me, that's the coolest Don train you've ever seen. <laughs> All right, I just had it half wound. Okay, I don't want to push it uh, with the winding. Okay, it was frozen solid. Um, I just uh, soaked it in WD-40, very lightly tapped it uh, with a uh, rubber mallet over and over and kept soaking it. And I'll be done, man. That thing freed right up. And, uh, man, I was a uh, happy camper when that happened. So, we got a working motor now. I'm going to put this back together. And uh, next video we'll be showing you um, a little more close-ups in the dark of that flint working. Throwing the sparks. And uh, then hopefully we'll be able to show you uh, the train running. Okay. Now, I do have a track for it, but the track's in terrible condition. It's bent as heck. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage it or not. I might have to make my own track somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do that either, but, you know, it's all part of the romance. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.